Heritage Channel, it's Natalia Perugues here, and we are at the 20th Annual Cuba Nostalgia Art Exhibition event with South Florida's very own Roberto Garcia Marquez. But before we go inside, actually get to the salsa music and all the dancing, let's meet some of his admirers. Hernandez, who has been coming here for quite a couple years. So tell me, how did you come across Roberto Garcia Marquez? I actually have been a big fan of Roberto for quite some time. Um, to be honest, being Cuban myself, I'm always trying to do anything to expand my culture. Is there one particular art piece you're kind of looking forward to today? You know what? Out of all of them, there's one called eh, Te Quiero Para Siempre. It's between that one and, uh, you know, Cuban Girl. Poetry at its finest. Guys, you have to check them out. This is going to be amazing. So I'll see you inside. I'll see you inside. Let's do it. Like the old saying goes, behind every great man, there's a powerful woman and a pretty one. I am here with Roberto's wife, Elizabeth Garcia, El Amor de Su Vida. How does it feel being a wife of an artist? Well, artists are very temperamental and moody, so yeah, it can, it can get tough sometimes, but it's very rewarding, it really is. With his hectic life and his schedule as an artist, you guys ever just kind of find time, you know, alone time for you two? Yes, it's called, I planned a trip, we're leaving next weekend, so don't make any plans. Is it Disney? Hell no. <laughs> How much input do you have in his paintings and his art? Well, I can try. <laughs> you know, an artist is an artist. They're going to do what they're going to do. And yes, we fight over painting sometimes because it's too dark and I want it brighter. But a lot of times he'll shut the door and say, you're not the artist. But at the end, he does throw the color in. So he knows. How does Roberto really bring in that Cuban passion into your relationship? He is just passionate about everything from cooking to dancing to living life. Does he give a little bit of uh, sazoncita? Sometimes a little too much. <laughs> How so though? Does he kind of shake a little bit? He does that and I do that. <laughs> ah, so hips don't lie, huh? Como Shakira, Shakira. Huh? <laughs> so guys, we're going to cha-cha our way inside. We're going to go see what it's like to be the beautiful, powerful woman that is behind Roberto Garcia Marquez. I'll see you guys inside. Guys, I am here with the art director of this amazing event we have going on. I'm here with Dania Sierra. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for coming out and, uh, and supporting us in the show today. How does that feel kind of being involved in all of this? Well, it's been many, many years of nostalgia for Cuba, and this invokes everything that one feels, and I think that the Latin, Cuban, American community should come out to see and, and see what they've missed and, and learn about their history and culture. Speaking of Cuban, what are your thoughts on Roberto Garcia Marquez? Roberto Garcia, I loved his work. His faces evoke Cuban culture. The spirituality in his faces is just... It speaks all Cuban. She said it and I want to see it. The man behind the paintbrush. Let's go! What are we waiting for? You guys, I finally found him. Among all these amazing artists, he is here right next to me. I'm with Roberto. Hi, Roberto. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you. I've heard that you're the creator of the Polimita on canvas. Can you tell me a little bit about that? The series of Polimita is a combination between the color of the national shell in Cuba, Polimitas, and the Cuban ladies. It's very important to focus on the energy and the vibe, the good vibe of the artwork. Do you have a certain signature that when someone looks at your paintings, they're like, oh, that is Roberto? On my painting, you can see the expression on, uh, on the eyes. You can see always flowers in the eyes of the ladies. And I had two silhouettes. It signified my two daughters, Sabbath and Sabrina. When you are making your paintings, what music are you listening to? I always have in the background music, always. Music is very important in my creation. And one of my favorite bands is Journey. Journey? Wait, wait, wait. What song? Don't Stop Believing. Are we, are we doing this? Yes. Don't Stop, stop Believing. Oh. Okay, so if the whole painting thing doesn't work, I think we have a music career that kind of blossoms. You know? Perfect. I think so. I think yes. it's actually really, really cool. How does being a Cuban immigrant inspire or influence your paintings? Very good question. Uh, one of my latest paintings is called Immigrant, and uh, it's about the struggles and the obstacles that all immigrants come to when they cross the border to this country. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to catch you that moment. For a novice, a beginner like me that really, really, really wants to learn how to paint, can you show me a technique or two? Let's do it. Seriously? Yes, let's do it. My mom would be so proud. You guys, this is happening. Oh my God, Mama, I love you. I want to show you the process. Come on. 
All right, so this is the painting that we're working with today. It's called Cuba Nostalgia 2018, and you're actually, you're really gonna let me actually paint this? Yes, I'm gonna give you the chance to do some strokes on it. Really? Okay, okay so. We're gonna start from the yellow. So I'm starting on yellow. Yes. Okay, mother, please. All right. That's perfect, don't touch the black. I learned that in kindergarten. We're yes. Good. <laughs> Let's do blue right now. Okay. Right here? Yes. The final touch, the certain je ne sais quoi to finish the painting. And one of the last things that I use mostly when I finish the painting is to do my signature. It is done, it is beautiful. Thank you so much for trusting me with this. So I'll catch you next time and then maybe I can actually make a own painting of my own. You can stop by anytime. Why not? It's some cafecito at the end. Con azúcar, like Santa Cruz. Yes.